Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about SOC Analyst interview question session 3. I already covered in session 2 the interview question and session 1 talk about what is SOC. So you can check the video in the description box and if you're new to my YouTube channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. So first interview question, normally any interviewer basically asks apart from what is right and all that is the difference between the vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. Definitely in the SOC also they will ask because as a SOC analyst, you must know the thin line difference between the VAPT because we have a red teaming who does the testing and all that. So you must be aware about that, which kind of a testing is happening. So according to that, you can able to build your backups. So vulnerability assessment, you can speak in such a way that, okay, vulnerability assessment is a process of identifying the known vulnerabilities and penetration testing is all about exploiting the vulnerability and getting into the system. Example, like we have a system A. Okay. And this is you as a red team guy example. So red team guy identifying the weakness in the system, like identifying weak password, open port that is basically called VA. But in the case of PT, what is happening in the PT? In the PT, we basically exploit that vulnerability and penetrate into the system. So more aggressive is basically called as a PT. It is like discovering the weak password, discovering the open port that is a VA but exploiting that open port and penetrating into a system that is called PT. So same description has been given here. So vulnerability assessment is a systematic review of security weakness in an information system. It verifies system is susceptible to any known vulnerability. Why we use the word known vulnerability? Example like we have a tool here that is basically used for VA. So tool basically maintain the signature of the known attacks only. And we just apply this set of signatures on the target system. If any signature is basically matched against the target system, we have discovered that as a vulnerability. Okay. Huh. Manual approach we are applying for conducting a VA. In that case, we can also identify the unknown vulnerability also. But tool is basically help us to identify the known vulnerability. And the process is that only. First, with the help of automation tool, we identify the known vulnerability. And then manually, we try to verify those vulnerability and also identify unknown vulnerability. So in vulnerability assessment, after identifying the known or unknown vulnerability, we assign the severity level to those vulnerability. But penetration testing is just, just a next level where we exploit the vulnerability and penetrate into the system. So in more in most in, in most environment, they have a approval of VA. And if you have approval of VA, you can't do the PT. But if you're doing a PT without the approval, it is considered as a unethical practice. So make sure if you have approval for VA, only conduct the VA. So let's move to the next question. Okay, it's a very common question which is asked uh, by the interviewer. What is SIEM? Security Information and Event Management. See, SIEM is a, if you go by the description, you can basically say like that SIEM is a system which provides centralized solution for collecting, analyzing, managing data from multiple source example like we have a firewall we have a system a we have a system b we have a system c and all our systems so there is a ip example like yeah so we have a ip here example 1.1.1.1 this ip is a attacker ip it was able to bypass the firewall so firewall basically maintain the log then it tried to hack the system A, it tried to hack system B, it tried to hack system C and that system basically maintain the logs for that. Okay, so it is difficult for the security analyst to go to each and every system to collect the log and that is why we basically introduce a log server, syslog and all that. So whatever activity happen on the system A, system B, system C, all this information goes to the centralized log server. So now we don't have that effort that manually go to the every system and push the logs because there is always a concern of log tampering and all that. And log is the only way to establish the accountability. But here the challenge is manually we need to review the log. Manually we need to correlate the log. In this case 1.1.1 .1 was able to bypass the firewall then it attacks system A, B, C. We need to first collect the 1.1 .1 data which is collected in the log 
then we need to correlate so this activity i want to make it as a automation with the data analytic function and that is where the sim come into the picture q radar splunk and all that so these tools collecting a log okay aggregating from all the systems okay then we analyzing for a one particular activity example i would like to know 1.1 so with the help of aggregation collection with the automation we can able to create a meaningful event so this activity is become automated which reduce the effort of the human and by this way we have a faster way to respond to the incident so in sim we have a two part for your information which mostly people are not aware about one is called as a security event management and one is basically called as a security incident management and there is a difference between that is sem provide the real time monitoring they provide the analysis notification of security events such as suspected security incident and all that and siem which is called as a uh, this one security information management it is basically a storage which maintain the logs and that logs is also used for achieving the compliance and legal requirement so if someone asks what is the main focus of siem what is the main goal of siem to introduce so siem basically address the limitation of a log management and it is basically automate the process of collecting aggregating analyze the data from multiple source to create a correlated event which is basically reduce the effort of security analyst by which he can respond to the attacks or incident so let's move to the next interview question what is the primary challenge you as a soc specialist faced in the organization while managing a soc now when interviewer basically ask this question it is not necessary it will be asked to the soc specialist for your information okay it can be asked uh, to a security analyst and by throwing this question by asking this question they want to know your psychological be behavior how you basically handle the incident because it's very important for you to calm your mind when you work in the soc so and they want to know here to test your leadership skill also so if you get some kind of a challenge how you handle so that is why in this case they're talking about what is the primary challenge so so first is deal with the massive data because we we are re receiving every day huge amount of data that is a primary challenge we have and which is basically positive negative which is actually or which is which is false data that basically uh uh, take time to consume an analysis so the biggest challenge is handling the data with the limited technology process and all that and second is dealing with the false positive data which is basically take more time false positive mean that we got an alert system was infected with the virus but in reality it is not okay so i'm going to make a one separate video on that false positive false negative and all that but here dealing with the false data or dealing with the massive data is the biggest challenge for the SOC, SOC specialist along with that limited visibility of the organization assets okay like whatever the in house assets we have which we need to monitor we can do that but any assets like mobile device laptops mobilities and are there and uh, sometimes tool is failed to discover the assets and we need to do the monitoring of that it is always a challenge and biggest challenge come when the encrypted traffic is passed through the firewall and all that even you basically adding some kind of a confidential confidential data and you encrypt that or even you sending a virus by encrypting the virus firewall will not able to inspect that so it is always a challenge for us to deal with the encrypted data sometimes we have a lack of adequate tools for monitoring and management that is another important thing sometimes you know we need to use the analytic skills by which we need to correlate the data and sometimes because of budgetary issue the the tool are not available and sometimes the lack of automations which basically save time it's basically create a concern okay so similarly you know to, uh, turning the human in the sock seat into the point of integration across the system you know it, it invite human error so by locking a staff into a repeated task as they instantiate standard response workflow to the security incident organization increase the staff exhaustions burnout limit incident response speed to the human scale so it is always a challenge so automations and integration are essential to avoid these issues and if we have a lack of automation it is basically create a lot of challenge so lack of automation is the biggest concern let's move to the next interview question okay so nowadays uh, there is a new trend is uh, we have seen where you know some folks also asking from the candidate what is basically xdr 
so xdr stand for extended detection and response okay so if you go by statement xdr is the combination of a technology that can aid security team in threat detection investigation and response okay so unlike previous generation security solution xdr is not limited to one security silo okay so it combined data from the network endpoint email iot devices cloud networks cloud workload identity system and it it combined data from all the layer of it environment and then they basically enriches them with a threat intelligence to detect the sophisticated and evasive threats today we use edr everywhere okay so that is the one thing we have and uh, the primary objective of xdr is that it provide the pre packaged automated threat detection investigation response for a variety of threats so if you take example of sim what 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 is the role of a sim sim is basically collecting a data from all the source correlate and providing me meaningful event if you talk about the firewall firewall is basically inspect the data based on the network traffic but xdr its work far far beyond all the solutions because sim is more from a log management so you can't differentiate sim and sdr xdr what it does they maintain the package of baseline they maintain the uh, signature of all the threat intelligence so they observe the traffic and compare against their defined profiles okay example receiving a 50 packets six like 70 packets 2000 packets it's something is abnormal right so that is called as a threat intelligence so that feature xdr has so thin line difference between sim and xdr is sim is basically use more from the point of view of collecting a data and correlating where the xdr is generating a data for them xdr observe the traffic analyze the threat in that and try to block so today everywhere on the endpoint you can see the xdr solution okay so if you get if you get if someone ask you just tell them it is a advanced technology which helps the security team in a automatic way to detect the threats investigate and respond we will not wait for the rule to be create and then we inspect they are the advanced threat intelligence solution which analyze the possible threats and then based on that try to respond to those things instead of just working on the static signature base or rule base and other solutions okay so let's move to the next interview question what is basically dos and how it's different from ddos attack now if you can clearly see that dos attack is a denial of service attack in this attack one computer send massive traffic to a target host and make it unavailable for the legitimate user and the impact ratio is less whereas a ddos attack is a distributed denial of service attack where the multiple computer generate the massive traffic against the target and unavailable legitimate user and impact ratio is high two keywords are there example like we have a hacker so hacker basically compromise one system okay this is called as a bot and launch an attack against the target so that is basically called as a dos attack but in the ddos what happen is he compromise multiple machine so when we compromise multiple machine this is basically called as a botnet so attacker basically compromise multiple machine to launch an attack against the target so this is basically called as a ddos so it is difficult to uh um, you know uh, it is difficult to eliminate this particular attack because sometime it's a legitimate traffic also so when one system is basically used to target that is basically called dos and when the multiple computers are involved to launch an attack that is basically called as a ddos so this is all from my side and if you find this video useful do share your comments in the do share your views in the comment box and do share in your network might be it is useful for others who preparing for the sock job Thank you